they're not gonna like I, like I've bought at some point in time. I think every Dynasty Warriors game in some way, shape, or form from like since like four. Right, so I've either bought the regular version or I bought the Empire's version. I didn't buy anything of nine. I didn't touch it. I played the demo of it and I said, "Oh, this is garbage. I'm not going to touch it." This is garbage more so than it usually is. Yeah. I can't deal with this. I can deal with your regular garbage, but this this is an insult to garbage. Hello and welcome to level one hundred and twenty-one of the Thoughts and Players podcast. The gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy, here with my compadre, David. What up? Uh, how is your evening? How's it going? It is going all right. Just had some dinner, so I'm nice and nice. full. And nice. Ready to talk people's ears off. There you go. There you go. Nice. How about you? I I I think I've got some allergy thing going, so I'm a little bit kind of feeling weird just weird you know but um yeah yeah yeah, so 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 navigating that but i feel like you know i feel like i'm here for a good discussion you know yeah i'm good for that yeah well ladies and gentlemen chickens ducks and hens we welcome you all in to this level of the pod 121 got a couple of interesting topics on the docket uh but of course let's start where we always start the games that we're playing now for this david you want to take it off or you want me to lead on this one how are you feeling i'll go okay okay all right so a lot of tft and <laughs> i downloaded another mobile game but it, it's a it's a better one the name okay of it is everyday puzzles okay it's, it's a little you know it's, it's it's a thinking. It has multiple different it's a thinker. puzzles yeah. to do. There's like crossword, uh, word search. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's Sudoku. Uh, there's okay. this. Uh, you know the one like the ads you see that has the letters. You have to connect the letters in a certain way to spell the words, and it goes Ye- up into the top. And yep. There's that yep. game. Okay. There's uh this. I I don't know what it's called. But it's like a uh. You get a topic, say it's colors, right? Mm-hmm. And you can put in any color. I'll put red. Mm-hmm. And then it gives you a number on the side if it's not the word that the game is looking for. So if it says red, and then uh, to the next to it, it says up arrow, and it says 500. So it means the f- answer is 500 words that are in that category away towards the beginning of the alphabet. You know, so I, you know, I'm like, okay, okay. So I'll, I'll put blue, and it says a down arrow with like 56. So like, you have to try and guess the word in eight guesses. I've yet to get that one right on any given day because there's like a, a daily puzzle for each game that they have. Mm-hmm. That's the only one I have not gotten a right answer yet. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it, it's a lot of fun. Okay. And then Apex, I got the diamond again, which I haven't in like four or five seasons. So that's good. Yeah. And that's about it. A little bit of finals, but not a lot. Okay. Okay. It sounds like you've been you've been firmly kind of in that word puzzle type of Yeah, I feel mode like I'm of... losing my mind, so I have to make sure it's yeah. still working a little bit. Yeah, we talked about before, you know, making sure it's got some rigidity. You don't want it to be smooth. You know? Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, it's gotta have some wrinkles and dimples in it. I feel you. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. What have yeah. you been playing? As far as I've been playing, so started off ring ding ding digga ding ding. Mafia three is done. Okay. Really? I beat it. I you completed just blew that it out of the water. I knocked it out. Um after I, I think maybe a week or so of not playing it at all. I hopped back in and I said, Okay, pedal to the floor. Let's get done. Let's get done with this bitch. Yeah, you're like, okay, and that's exactly bad. what happened. Yeah. So, uh, put a lot of time into it. What you um, end up with hours wise? Probably thirty something. I want to say. Okay. Which, from referencing how long to beat, how long the beat says that you can beat the story in twenty five, you probably can. 
if you're really just going through, not doing any type of exploring, not doing any type of like side missions or anything like that. Right. And then like if you want more of a experience, there's like a, it's like 41 hours. And then I think like a completionist is something like 56. So I landed between that Dang. just straight mainline, you know, all gas, no brakes at a 25 and a little bit more of like the 40 something. I landed in the middle, I think. By the time it's said it done, I'm guessing between 30 and 35 hours, maybe. That's, um, what, that's what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the game has three possible endings. In my case, I was able to experience two of the three, but there are three possible endings that you can choose from for your character, which is interesting. Great story, great world building. The way it examines 1968's uh, America in the Deep South from the vantage point of a black American is uh, very interesting and revealing. Game's too long. It's too, it's too <laughs> damn long. It's too, all, all that said, it's just way too long. Um, great, great character writing. The, the voice acting and everything is great. Um, the game's just too long and it's too repetitive. The mechanic is go here, learn about a guy, go cells, learn about another guy, kill the first guy and the second guy that brings out the big guy that owns the area you figure out stuff about him you have to go back to either the first place or the second place that you killed the first or second guy and then beat more people so you can finally kill the third guy and it's that and it's that mechanism that that's 30 hours it's it's 30 right. hours of that uh so it's too long for, for it to be that repetitive either shorten it by 10 solid hours if you're going to be that repetitive or be less repetitive uh, if you're right. going to have it that long. So, but yeah, got through Mafia. So Mafia 3 is done, which means, of course, I am I am looking for some new stuff. To, I am trying to now discover what the next game is going to be. I feel like that I was actually, Mafia 3, I was actually fortunate to give that a try because I got done with Expeditions Rome. That was 40-something hours. Right. And it's like, okay, I got to find another game that kind of grips my that grabs my interest. I was able to luck into Mafia 3, which then grabbed me for 30 hours. So now I've got to try to find something else. And so I played a little bit of um, Atlas Fallen, which is what I've heard is a bad game. And I played maybe about four, 30, 40 minutes of that. Um, it is kind of bad-ish. Uh, <laughs> and then um, I've also, uh, I also one of the, I also downloaded two games. Oh. One that I might, I'm probably going to end up playing because it's a game I've played and beat before, and that's Fable Three. I'm going to play it again, um, but okay. I am trying to avoid that because I'm trying to go back and play another game that I said I I wanted, to, I gave a second chance to, and oh. I want to give a third chance to. And that game is Outer Worlds, so okay. I'm now yeah. hopping. I'm going to try hop hop back into Outer Worlds and see if that can grab me a little bit more and try to like beat and experience that game. Um, that game I got through Game Pass, so it's it's another game where it's not technically like part of part of my backlog of like games I own, kind of. Right. But it's another game that I can play, and I feel like if I if I beat that game, I would have definitely earned going and grabbing another game that I'm interested in playing. But then again, I have so many other games that I want to play and beat. Um, I'm also thinking about I own Tiny Tina's Wonderland, so I think jumping back into that maybe clearing that because that's supposed to be maybe like 15 17 hours so i was like oh if i can oh, just really be lying through this and that's three knocked out trade them in do whatever i want to do but i'm speaking of head it's wishful thinking right. so far you know, yeah, i got yeah. my i got mafia three knocked out that's most that's good I'm, that's good yeah and i'm happy to get through it it was great I, overall i would say i would recommend it except that it's that time, that time, and that, and that repetitive. I, you can't. I can't do it. I, I, I can't. I, I can't imagine <laughs> jumping back and doing more of anything in that game. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But I am even more excited for Mafia Four whenever that comes along. The storytelling is there. The storytelling is there. So I like that. But that's it for what I've been playing, though. Nice. Yeah. All righty. That means we're gonna flow into our topics. And I got the first one here. I've been thinking about some Ooh. stuff, so let's kind of move move into it. So okay. I've talked about, hey, we just I just mentioned it, finding new games for the backlog. Now I feel like I've earned because my, my quota has been game in, game out. It hasn't been two, three games in, or two, yeah. It hasn't been like two, three games out for a game in. Mine's has always been a game out, a game in. That's that's my thing. 
So I'm up two games. You're doing it pretty good so far. I've allotted myself a two game. I have a two game allowance right now. One of those games may potentially end up being Dragon Age The Veil Guard, which comes out at the end of October. It is essentially Dragon Age 4. Um, and it had me thinking because I feel like the last game that that this would be... Man, why am I blanking on the names right now? Not Bethesda, but the last games that BioWare have put out uh, have been Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect Andromeda was bad. Not as bad as it got a rap for, but it wasn't great. I would say it was mediocre. Anthem was bad. Just playing that. Yeah, wasn't that just a quick and done thing? Yeah, that was... Ugh. It wasn't it wasn't put it didn't have a bullet put in its head like Concord, but it got a bullet. And so uh I'm thinking like Dragon Age Inquisition is well thought of, but people also understand that it's it's the weakest of the franchise and it is a weaker game. And it kind of really feels like for Bioware and for this Dragon Age IP that the the IP is at its weakest. And if Dragon Age the Veil Guard comes out and fails. Remember, this is coming out in the shadows of not only a post-Witcher 3 world, when we talk about RPGs, right? right. Not only is it coming out in a post-Witcher 3 world, specifically to, like, CRPG, um, art, like, like styles of, like, that, it is coming out in a post Boulders Gate 3 world. So... Oh, yeah, you're right. Dragon Age can't come out and be a slouch. It's got to have some meat to it. It's got to right. be something set up right. It's got to hit. Right? This is coming from Bioware, who I believe has been firmly infected by EA and all the things that EA does to games. Um, so, and, uh, like, kind of the way that, that Activision Blizzard, Activision has infected Blizzard and therefore infected, like, Diablo 4. Mm -hmm. I think the same mechanisms or the same thing is happening to Dragon Age. So I feel like Dragon Age has got a hit. The Veil Guard has got a hit. Because if it doesn't, it may be the end or the very precipitous falling off of a franchise. And so I had a, a question of, I thought about this, like, what other games have I, have I thought, like, either played or have I thought about where it felt like the well-being of a franchise was hanging in the balance based on this game? If this game hits, if it does well, the franchise can stick around or possibly thrive again. But right. if it's if it sinks, the franchise is, you know, it's getting John Wicked. Like what's like what's <laughs> happening? You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, yeah. I've got a few games here. One in the past, one I think it's a current release, and one that would be a future release that I think kind of affects the franchises. But I'm interested in what games you kind of had that you felt like uh, would be that for franchises that you're familiar with or that you played with, you know? Yeah, um, I can think of one right off the bat. Now, I've talked about it quite a few times before, and I feel like it put it into a... a whatever those things are, where you put them in and it freezes it and stays in time until they unthaw, yeah. like a like, Cairo... Like a, yeah, like a cryo, like, like a cryo freeze. It's in a cryo vault. Right. Yeah, so yeah. the last Twisted Metal game, I feel like, did that to the franchise. And the reason I say it put it in the, the Cairo freeze instead of just killing it is because we did get a TV show based off of Twisted Metal. So it's not mm -hmm. dead yet. But yeah. that game came out in 2012, okay? Mm -hmm. 22 years later, almost 23, and we've yet to see another game from that IP. Yeah. Now, who's to say, you know, we have season two of the Twisted Metal coming, and then who knows if they might bring a game. But I feel like that is one that put it over the edge and put it on the hiatus is the last Twisted Metal. Yeah, would, it, would, a, would the game or would the TV show have a kind of like a witcher or fallout effect where in where in regards to like i feel like with the witcher right 
from what I understand, right. CD Project Red was saying that The Witcher 3 was kind of going to be it for The Witcher franchise. They were just going to focus on developing new IPs. Mm-hmm. Now, they came out with Cyberpunk 2077. They bungled that. Right. But then the show kind of came came out. It reinvigor- reinvigorated interest in The Witcher. And mm-hmm. now, okay, we're exploring The Witcher 4. Same thing with Fallout, right? Fallout yeah. 76 was a dying game. A Fallout TV show came, and then all of a sudden Fallout 76 has their highest player counts they've had in the entirety of that of that game being out there. So it's yeah. kind of like you're thinking possibly if Twisted Metal comes out, it continues to build, that possibly there's enough interest that bubbles up to where Sony says, uh, let's give the let's give the let's dust the franchise yeah, it, off and give it a shot. Yeah, and you make some a great point, actually, because Twisted Metal they don't have a game that the fan base can go, oh, I want to play that game. Right. You know, the last one was on PS3. I don't know if they're in the PlayStation Store, you mm-hmm. know, and, like, there was not really a game for the people to flock to. So, like, now if they were to release one, of course, our us old fanboys were like, heck, yeah, it's about time. But then the new people yeah. from the series were like, oh, hey, there's a new game off of this. Maybe I'll try it. But right. yeah, we yeah, I I didn't even think about that. They if they had a game out that came out, you know, 4, 5, 6 years ago, I feel like they would have had huge numbers for it. Yeah, possibly. Now you think about like also like The Last of Us, I'm not sure how much that raised that boosted player count with that show being out and doing so well. I do know that the Halo show didn't increase the player count at all for Halo. So there's, you know, instances where it may not work. But I do feel like that you are correct. I do feel like that, you know, that is a thing where, hey, if this season two really hits, it really blows up, you know, what I'm saying or just gains more momentum. So you may be like, hey, you know what? Let's dust off the IP. Let's do something that's a little bit more measured, a little bit, you know, um, you know, just down to the bones of stuff. Put it out. See what kind of interest we get. See see what works, you know? Yeah. There's there's so much room of opportunity for this IP, but that last one, which was Twisted Metal, which one was that again? Uh, it was just Twisted Metal 2012. Ah, okay, that's the one that kind of put it in a cryo in a cryo sleep. That's yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Because like like I I complained about before that the game is consists the game consists of three stories, which was Sweet Tooth, Mr. Grimm, and Dollface, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. No point. I feel you. Um, I could say that. So the one I have, it there wasn't really a cryo sleep. I don't know, mm-hmm. not a cryo sleep, but maybe a coma. Ooh. And Ooh, coma. uh, comas are nice. It, but this is a game that could have made or break the franchise, and I think it ended up making it. And that is Assassin's Creed Origins. Oh. Um, now the game that almost killed the Assassin's Creed was Assassin's Creed Unity. That's what almost killed the franchise. Now, a lot of people feel... It, a lot of people, I think, have, like, misremembrances where they think it was Unity and then Origin. No, there were at least two games released in between that, which was Assassin's Creed Syndicate, uh, which takes place in England, and then Assassin's Creed Rogue, which I think is either takes place or your protagonist is Irish. So it takes place in that in that kind of area. Um, Syndicate got meddling reviews, but it didn't change the pendulum anyway. It, it, it didn't change the direction. So Assassin's Creed was still doing this. So you have Unity hits, it's going down. You have uh, Syndicate still going down. Rogue still going down. And by all accounts, from what I've heard, Rogue is actually better than Syndicate. Um, and so they took some time off, and then they come back with Origins. Now Origins. And the combat style that they changed with the new Assassin's Creed's, they're heavily influenced by what two games or two game or two two games essentially. Okay. The Witcher Three. (laughs) And uh, I can't believe I don't know if at this time it might have been either Dark Souls Two or Dark Souls Three. Those are the obvious inspirations for the direction they took with Assassin's Unexpected, Creed. Unexpected, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It definitely went more heavy um, into role-playing combat games and less into these stealth games. Um, so they did that whole change with Origins. They brought it back. They kind of changed how they were doing the narrative. And 
people were drawn to it. They were drawn for one, you set the game in Egypt. Egypt is interesting. So let's go yeah. there. And everything they did as far as the game mechanics, the combat, how that played, the leveling systems, it feeling more and more like an RPG, that worked. So Origins begets you Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which doubled down, it doubles down on a lot of those things. And then Odyssey begets you Valhalla, which I feel like is the best version of this new path they've been taking. They went a little bit back. They went to go back old school with Mirage. They came out either, I think, last year, which is more in the spirit of those original stealth games. Mm -hmm. I think it did okay, but I'm not sure if it really did that well. Um, the next one they're going to come out with, now they're kind of they're kind of riding in two lanes because you have a segment of the, of the fan base that wants like the old stealth type of games, and you want the segment of the fan base that wants these newer kind of action-oriented games. So yeah. they're kind of exploring both of them. Um, but as Assassin's Creed Origins to me, if that came out with this whole new investment and new direction of how they were going with the with the franchise, if that game flopped, Assassin's Creed would be over. Because the old way wasn't working. They tried a new way and the new way bombed. Where do we go? Right. Right. There's not so, much options. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of writing on that game. And Assassin's Creed Origins succeeded just enough for the franchise to continue. That's pretty cool. I didn't even know that because I I've never been a fan of Assassin's Creed, I guess. Mm -hmm. But to see it take a dip and then just like kind of shoot back up, that's 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 pretty cool. Yeah. Um go with my another one of mine. Yeah. Okay. Um I kind of feel like this one is in the same position as the Assassin's Creed. So, I know this is it's the most sold game in this series, right? Mm -hmm. But most of the fans do not like this one. A lot of people avoid it. They don't replay it. They always down talk it, myself included. It's Resident Evil 6. Yeah. Yeah. So huge amount of the fan base, not a fan of the game. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if they didn't, redo what they were doing and went back to like the horror aspect and stuff like they did in resident evil seven. Yeah. I feel like resident evil would have take, taken a major hit. Mm -hmm. I, don't, yeah. I don't know what they would have done to come back from that. Maybe they still could have released resident evil seven after another game that was like resident evil six and that bombed and it would come back. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know if you can gain some of those customers back after that. Right. You have, um, yeah. I feel like, I mean, well, we all know that we've said before that like the new Resident Evils were very heavily inspired by uh, the PT demo, like that whole thing. PT, I think, will maybe kind of tie into another topic we have later on, um, but heavily inspired by that that's to say there are games or developers out there that were willing to are able to take resident evil's lunch in the horror lane right which is where resident evil was pivoting into the action lane yeah and it's like uh you can do that but you've got stiffer competition right um so the fact that they were like six came out and the reception and everything it got them pivoting back into that horror lane. I think a lot of those possible newcomers were, they, they were kind of, you know, suppressed by Resident Evil taking such a different, you know, taking that pivot back into horror and doing it so well, you know? Right. Because, like, a lot of people blame 4 for 6 because that's when mm. it kind of started being more action-y. Yeah. And then 5 just jumped on it and made it more, more so. Mm-hmm. And then six was just too much. Yeah. Like four, I was, you know, it's my favorite one overall. And then five, it was good. I think I played it three or four times. Mm -hmm. But like six, I played one campaign. I'm like, this is dumb. I'm never playing this again. Yeah. And then seven, I, I had I just, I played the entire thing through. Yeah. In one go. It was amazing. Yeah. It's like, this isn't, this isn't what we're looking for. This isn't what your, you know, your customers want. Yeah, so, yeah. So like even, even when they do this, the spinoff games. Like I know, uh, Operation Raccoon City. It wasn't the greatest 
reviews, but it was still fun. It was still based on what Resident Evil is based on. Mm-hmm. You know, you were in Raccoon City, all these zombies, and it was multiplayer, so you were killing other people that were playing as well, blah, blah, blah. So it wasn't like a story and everything like that, but at least it was in the correct genre. Right. So, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's that would be another one is Resident Evil that's a good 6 one. and 7. That's a good one. Um, <clears throat> A game that I think a franchise will either live and die on. Is a game that has not come out yet, and oh. uh, but it's gotta, it will. It's, it's and gotta. It, it's will, and it's and, it, and it's gotta do. It's gotta have its thing right. Okay, um, Koei Tecmo, listen to me. Whatever you do with Dynasty Warriors Ten, it better work, because Dynasty Warriors Nine was the worst thing ever. We're talking about a franchise that, by and large, isn't even heralded as something great. It's a dumb Mushu fighter. By that's how most people view it. And everyone views it that way, and we we still go to it. But they somehow made the game more empty and vapid. You can't do that. That's crazy. All you have, all you have, is the diehards. And if and if they decide to, that they're not gonna like, I, like I've bought at some point in time. I think every Dynasty Warriors game, in some way, shape, or form from like since like four right so i've either bought the regular version or i bought the empire's version i didn't buy anything of nine i didn't touch it i played the demo of it and i said oh this is garbage i'm not going to touch this, it. this is garbage more so than it usually is i yeah. can't deal with this i can deal with your regular garbage but this this is an insult to garbage so 10 has got to be better it's got to do better because is it if it doesn't, you're going to distance other people. And let me tell you something that I know. Programming the intelligence of a Mushu game, it ain't that hard. You ain't programming Civ Six. You ain't programming. You ain't even programming Call of Duty. You're 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 programming a Mushu game. That means that you program a bunch of people walking around and surrounding one person that will kill them all. It's not it's not hard AI programming or anything at all, right? There right, they could right. easily have other like other other publishers think about the like Hyrule Warriors and like Persona and Persona 5 has like their own kind of like Mushu version of that. There's been other games that have come out and done Mushu better in the interim of that. Yeah, that and they uh, haven't even done it as main games. They've done it as spin-offs. Yeah, the Zelda this is one. just a spin-off. The Hyrule Warriors they're like, "Hey, you know, we make such great game. We make su- such great games with Zelda. Zelda's so great. Hey, do you guys want to just dick around and make a Mushu? Yeah, let's do that. They go around, and make it out, and it's like, oh, this is better than any Dynasty Warriors game that's came out the past five years. <laughs> so, so you can't, you can't go into Dynasty Warriors ten. It's a lot riding. If they don't it's hit on hit. that, if it doesn't hit, it's at least going into some kind of coma. They're going to at least take two, three, four years off. Because also remember, they also have like Samurai Warriors and uh, I, th- I forgot what the other one was, but they have a right. couple of other Mushu IPs that I think are more well received by their diehards, the core audiences. No one in general buys these games, but the core audiences, right? So I think they're better. Exactly. Dynasty Warriors has got a, I mean, you're talking about the romance of the Three Kingdoms, man. Like that's a story that's timeless in regards to history and stuff. You can tell it over and over. Just do it better. I mean, what, what you did with Nine was ridiculous. So that's one. They got to do better. I, f- I feel you on that. Like, I I played 4. 4 is my favorite. And when 5 came out, I played 5. I hated it. And I haven't touched a Dynasty Warrior since. Mm-hmm. So for you to say, because I know, you, like you said, you've played and bought them all at some point in time, some way, somehow. Yeah. And then to not touch 9, like, they really had to mess something up there. They messed it. Yeah. And then I know Nintendo is a huge corporation, but for them to just kind of go in there and make one just because and them do better should not happen. Yeah, and they've made, like, Hyrule Warriors is one instance. They've made other kind of spinoff Mushus before, too. But the point I'm trying to make is, like, this is just a th- this Mushu is the thing you do. Like Dynasty, yeah. War, Dynasty Wars is, is, is a Mushu game. You should be game. the kings of this. Nintendo's saying, hey, we're going to go ahead, while we're busy developing two of the 100 top games ever made, we'll also just poop out a Mushu in the same universe 
oh, and it's just better. It's better than the thing that you do, just focusing on just that, right? Like, yeah, exactly. You, That's what I was saying. You yeah. got to do better. The same with Persona, right? It's like, how, hey, how we're creating this great JRPG. Like, let's just go ahead and crap out of Mushu real quick and see how that works. Everyone's like, oh man, this is awesome. You know what I'm saying? And like, meanwhile, they can't even. It, it's like I don't know what happened. Like, I still own Dynasty Warriors Eight Empires. I still have that for my Xbox. I'll mm-hmm. keep that. I love playing that game. Um, but yeah, I didn't touch nine at all. Ten has got to hit. It's got to. It's got to be good. It's, it's. It can't. If it doesn't, I feel like the franchise is. That's either that's the the, the, the beginning of the end. Nine might have been the beginning of the end, but I think ten is definitely the beginning of the end if it sucks. Yeah, I I agree. If if nine was that bad, and then I, I think ten is, they got one more strike. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't really have any more, but I I just want to mention, like, Call of Duty. Like, when where there is is there a game that is gonna kill that franchise or like anything? I feel like this game is never going to go away and it's awful um yeah i think it's too big to fail now it used to be the case of that like for instance like call of duty killed middle of honor right and middle of honor was a huge franchise yeah it used to be if something else came along that was bigger and better it could kill it and um i feel like call of duty is so big now that it can't be killed there were supposed to be We'll mention and kind of talk about one of the games that was supposed to have killed it. Battlefield had the potential to kill it. And then oh, EA yeah. screwed that up. Right? They did. Um, you know, so it's it, 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 it very specifically in that lane of military shooter, right? Had the potential to. Right. And and at one point they were really, really competing. And I think that I think that tipping point where it could have almost been that is when you had Call of Duty Infinite mm-hmm. and you had Battlefield One. Because Infinite got trashed and Battlefield 1 was like loved, right? I think about like you think about like the, the trailer releases, like like the Call of Duty trailer had like the most downvotes for a video, for a video game trailer, reveal trailer, and then Battlefield 1 had like the most upvotes for a video game reveal trailer, right? It's like there was a moment there, there was an opportunity along with another game. But that game got screwed. But anyway, you know. Yeah. They had the opportunity. I, 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 I guess I that's thought I'd mention it. It should. Oh, yeah. It should. It should die at this point, or go back. Go back to basics. Regress a little bit and go back to regress basics. a Figure little out. bit. Yeah. Anyway, do you have any more? That's. I've got. All I got for your time. I've got one more. It'll be okay. very quick. It's a current game. We have to see how things played out. As much joy and as much and much hype as I had for Homeworld Four resurrecting the Homeworld franchise. It might kill it in one fell swoop as well. You think? Right? Huh? That's how poorly received the game has been. Yeah, it's crazy. And it, it's if anything, it may be a thing of where like people just play Homeworld Four to support that game, but that being, but that franchise, I don't think moves beyond that game anymore. I think that oh, I think that franchise just is unfortunately. I think it just is what it is. Yeah, but that's it. Dang. Yeah, it's it just. It's unfortunate, like, when you think about it, like, these people, you know, at least, you know, thinking the best, these people are working hard, doing all this time, trying to mm-hmm. make a, a nice, decent game, and then it just bombs. Yep. Like, like, okay, there goes three years of my life that I don't want to put on a resume. Exactly. Yep, because they screwed it up so much. And, I mean, if freaking, I mean, let's talk about another one real quick, if they aren't careful with how they're handling it, um, with Paradox... City Skylines 2 might might kill that franchise, you know? Yeah. Um, and Has again, it any better? It has, but it's still like the the player base just has such a sour taste in its mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's almost like what happens. And again, if it's kind of like with City Skylines 1, City Skylines was around for like 10 years, 10-ish years, I feel like, before it got a 2. If they're planning there's, on this game being no around time. 10-ish years, there's time, there's potentially, but I feel like if you have a 10-year plan for a game, by year two and a half, three, you have a good idea of whether it's sustainable or not. You know, right? You got to kind of examine it from there. So they're still in year one ish. I feel like or maybe year one and a half. Let's say. So they still got some there's time hope. to figure it out. There's some hope, but 
it's 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 fleeting. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it for my topic. All right. Um, so you're talking about games that can potentially uprise an IP or kill an IP entirely. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of an offshoot of that topic is what games were you excited for that ended up just being canceled altogether? Mm. Cancel games um, are a terrible thing. It experience. is. And I have two, I mean, I have three on here. All of them I was disappointed. I was hyped for and disappointed they got canceled. Two on here, um, I could, if in the right situation, with the right mood, with the right music and the right lights, I could be moved to tears on yeah. the fact that these were canceled. So I, I can give one. Okay. Let me give the one that I was excited about but let down by. So that first one is... Um, Star Wars 1313 or 1313. Those that may or may not remember, this was kind of the open world Star Wars game being developed in the in the early 2010s um, by Amy Hennig, who I believe was over at, let me check, either, it was either Pandemic or Visceral Games. Um, they were developing it. She came from... Um, she had she, her her history is basically it is from the Uncharted series. Uh, okay. That's kind of like where her pedigree is. And um, this game was kind of feeling the same way. It was open world. You could walk around. You were you were playing as a bounty hunter, and you were kind of examining and living on Coruscant, which is a planet in Star Wars. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into it. Not going to nerd it out, but Coruscant within like the underworld of it, right? The underbelly of it. So okay. you would kind of play in that criminal area. When I think back of like. This game feels like it carries the spirit of Kotor to some extent, right? With Knights of Republic, Knights of uh, Knights of the Old Republic one and two. Um, if for the first Kotor, there is a part where you're, and I forgot the I, for, I forgot the pl- the planet, but in that beginning part, there is a lot of the story that takes place where you're dealing with the criminals and the underbelly, and it's a really interesting and captivating narrative phase of that game, and so it right. felt like this game was going to broaden that and flesh that out a little bit more and have your character dwell in that a little bit more as they're making the way through about as a bounty hunter. And uh, it got canceled because I think this is when Disney acquired Star Wars. And so things got, got shuffled around, right? LucasArts got, they were doing their whole thing. And so this IP just kind of got lost. Uh, and That's unfortunate. it's unfortunate because you can look at the trailers when it was going to come out. Graphically, it looked incredible. Um, the story was going to probably be great. Again, we're talking about someone that has a pedigree of Uncharted. The Uncharted narrative story storytelling is great. Um, and it probably would have done a lot to ground and take the overall story and feeling and lore of Star Wars in an in a interesting direction. And it didn't get that chance. But that's one that was like, oh, man, that sucks. It would have been nice to have this other kind of cool Cold War game. I yeah. mean, Ubisoft pumped, like, you know, pooped out Star Wars Outlaws this year, and I think they were trying to go about that in their way, but of course they can't, because there's Ubisoft. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but I would say that one for sure is one that hurts. I This is a little off topic, but that mm-hmm. reminded me of, I was trying to buy my first house, and I found a house, I really liked it, I put a bid on it, they accepted it, I put in the $1,000 deposit, did everything going, and the company that owned it, the bank or whatever it was, they got bought out. And the people that bought them froze all transactions. So I lost the oh, house. Wow. Oh, wow. I was like, come on. Yeah. Well, that it happens. That's exactly the same thing almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, now, I I don't pay attention to stuff I like. Like you do like you said you knew this game was coming out and then it got canceled mm-hmm. stuff like that so i was like looking for games that i know i would have been excited for if i knew about them mm-hmm. and the first one that i found that i really liked is and i'm very upset about this is there was gonna be a freaking live service twisted metal on the ps5 mm-hmm. i would have bought a ps5 I would buy the 30th Anniversary Edition Pro PS5. That bad boy looks hard. Okay? Uh I would have gone all out for this game alone. Yeah. 
if it looked decent enough. And the only reason it was canceled is because of the 900 employees worldwide that laid off yeah. at the beginning of this year. Yep. What in the world? They knew that the Twisted Metal series was coming out. Okay, yeah, sure, they didn't know if it was going to do good or not. But, mm-hmm. I, I mean, at, at this point in time, they did. And why? 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 I don't even have words. It's just just doesn't get just doesn't get the respect. Sony just doesn't no value the IP. You know, this um, this yeah. world we live in is twisted. To mm-hmm. not have another twisted metal. I feel you. I feel, you. I, feel you. I feel you on the wordplay. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um. Okay, here I've got four. Okay. I might just I might just keep it at three. Okay. So I'm gonna go through the two that are devastating. The first one, we kind of got it, but we didn't. That one is Titanfall 3. When Uh, Titanfall 3 got canceled, there would not uh, be a Titanfall 3. I said, oh, this there's no fairness in the world. There's no fairness in the world. In the universe where the God's heart is black. To not allow me to have to have this to have this (laughs) game. Um it, it 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 was I've talked multiple times about how much I love Titanfall 2 yeah, and how same. Titanfall 2 positioned that franchise perfectly to grow and become huge. Yeah. And Titanfall 3 felt like it was going to take advantage of everything and build it out more. It would, it would have its own space and time. Remember that Battlefield or well, Titanfall 2 launched in between Call of Duty Infinite and Battlefield 1. Smack dab in between them, right? And the thing that was kind of crazy is that Titanfall IP and the Battlefield IP are both owned by EA. So the question was, EA, why would you do this to your own franchise? Right? These two are way bigger. They're going to sell way more copies. No one's going to buy Titanfall, right? And so, of course, because of that, because of when it was released in poor marketing, it didn't put up the numbers. And therefore, we didn't get a Titanfall 3. It is merely because of incompetence. That we did not get this next game. Yeah. Um, so the fact that this was canceled, and they said, well, it's being canceled, but they're doing an online battle royale version based on the world. And I said, oh, I had no interest in that, but I'll check it out when it comes out. That game happened to be Apex Legends, right? So, yeah. so you know, in the wake of this game being canceled was another game that came out that I do not play. So I, it's, uh, I'm like, so okay, I, well. I didn't know that they did say there was going to be a Titanfall 3 and that it was canceled. Mm -hmm. That definitely would have been on my list as well. Yeah. And just, you know, proof in the pudding. I have 3,500 hours on Apex, right? I would have rather have Titanfall 3 come out. Yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing that encapsulates or whatever word I'm trying to say, how Titanfall plays. Mm -hmm. Like, Titanfall 1 did amazingly, and we can see that Call of Duty tried to copy it with Infinite yes. Warfare or Advanced Warfare, whichever one it was, yep. and that was one of the worst Call of Duties out there. Mm-hmm. They yeah. just they did it so well, and then having the Titans, the control and stuff, and mm-hmm. I, I can only imagine how hard it was to balance being a pilot and being a Titan. Yeah. You know, it doesn't seem like an easy feat. Right. People they, can't even, you can't even balance Overwatch properly. And they're, they're you know, they're setting up Titans and pilots all together. Right. And it was amazing franchise. And I'm, Be- I'm upset it was canceled. You, you make a good point, right? You have to think about, like, exceptional FPSs. How do you build that, right? It's hard, right. It's hard to do that. Well, Respawn did that with Titanfall 2. Exceptional or very good mech games... It's hard to make those. Most mech games kind of blow. As a mech game, Titanfall 2 plays extremely well at it. Yeah. So you have this game, you have this company that was able to balance both of these and marry them seamlessly. And um, yeah, it got canceled. It just got canned. I, I think from what I recall, at one point they were working on both. They were working on, um, or maybe it was actually three. And I think what ended up happening was that 
Titanfall three was getting worked on. Um, no, actually, I think here's what here's what I think was actually happened is Titanfall three was getting worked on, and um, Fallen Jedi Order was getting worked on, and the pivot was more to Star Wars. But Titanfall three didn't have the juice to get done. But mm-hmm. they saw the bits they did like, so they pulled that out and made that the battle royale. They made that apex. Right. Like I think that's eventually what ended up happening. I would gladly sacrifice Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor for Titanfall three. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. But I yeah. remember hearing that it was canceled. I was like, no, this game is oh, this game is perfect. How would you not make another one of it? You know? Yeah, exactly. But that it that's what happened. Ugh. Okay, so this one's going to come to a surprise, right? So I, I'm not, like, in turmoil because this game was canceled. You know, I was going through the list of stuff, and I found this one. I'm like, that would have been fun and interesting. Mm-hmm. So there was a Street Fighter versus Tekken that was canceled. Okay. Now, Street Fighter, everyone knows Street Fighter, and... Mm-hmm. That's because most people straight play Street Fighter. If they're playing fighting games, 95% of the time is Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. But Tekken has been around just as long Mm -hmm. as Street Fighter. And they're on like Tekken 8 or something now. And to see them combined would have been very interesting because Tekken is 3D. You can move move around circle wise at least. Right. And Street Fighter's 2D. And from what I've read, it would have been in the 2D world. But I just love games that collide like that. Like, I'm a big fan of Marvel vs. Capcom. Mm -hmm. Those are awesome games. I'm not good at them, and I don't play them almost ever. But very interesting, and I love the idea. So, and I I feel like that would have maybe tied in the two franchises quite a bit. Instead of the whole, you know, it's like Star Wars vs. Star Trek. You know, and, and red versus blue. Like, everyone's always on their own sides, and they have a game that combines them. I think yeah, would have shifted it a little bit. I think it would have offered a good kind of, like, opportunity to play with that perspective. You mentioned, like, one game being traditionally kind of, like, 2D and another, another kind of being on a 3D plane, right? Like, having a chance to kind of maybe do some cool, interesting things with perspective in regards to how the players move about a fight level or different stuff like that. That would have been cool to see. Right. Um, but yeah, didn't I get that? And yeah, just having two well-known IPs like that come together and clash, you know, it kind of reminds me, you know, you mentioned like Marvel versus Capcom and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's always exciting when you hear about like a crossover of branding or, or brands of like someone's added to like a, a Smash Bros game. Like, oh, it's someone from a completely different. Oh, it's um, it's Cloud. He's, you know, He's in Smash Bros. or something like that, you know? Right. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Um, the last one that I'll give, unless I give the other one, but the last one that I'll give is one that... Okay, okay. The most devastating. The most devastating for me. And that oh. is Sleeping Dogs 2. No. I've talked before about how much I love Sleeping Dogs. Yeah. Uh, I beat the game three, four times. I would play it again in a heartbeat. And the story of Wei Shen, and the Red Pole Triads and that story examining Hong Kong is such an interesting way. Uh, if you talk about G, if you want to call it a GTA clone, that's fine. This is to me the best GTA clones of all of them. I would play this over like something like GTA Four any day. Um, and yeah, the idea that they were working on it and then it ended up getting canceled. And there's some rumors that it, they may be. They may be kind of reviving it some way, shape, or form, but that's yet to be seen. But, man, Sleeping Dogs 2 being canceled, it's like, what is going on, you know? It's just do, devastating. Do you know the reason it was canceled? Um, I think it's just kind of this. So they were published by Square Enix. Square Enix is weird all the time with their releases. So I think it was just a matter of, like, things being moved around with their end let's see what square enix said about it Got um it. i think yeah the sales for the first one weren't as much as they needed to be um uh, and they ended up uh shutting down the studio united Ugh. front studios ended up getting shut down shut down of course 
Yeah. So um, it's like, man, you know, I don't know if part of me, part of me feels like, man, I'd rather you just sell the IP and let someone else make it. But I don't know who else I would want to make it. Well, I mean, the the straps have to be there if they were in some sort of production, right? Yeah, you would think. But, I mean, who knows what they were using? Who knows how old that code is by now, you know? Uh, You have a very great point, yeah. They'd have to try to build something from scratch. And, you Uh, know... That's unfortunate. Yeah, there's something about... um, I mean, I just... It's a personal kind of preference, but I I have a really... um, Some studios could do it good enough... So like Sucker Punch with Ghost of Tsushima does it good just enough, but I'm really more so of a fan of like Asian based studios developing Asian themed games. So I would I would think that I would want it to stay with like Square or Capcom or some other studio that could develop something to tell the story of something in Hong Kong, you know? Right. Um, and so, yeah, so I just I don't know, but yeah, dang, that's a bummer. Mm-hmm. It is a bummer. I don't. How, how did the numbers not do well on the first one? I I don't remember hearing anything totally bad about that. GTA clone, very middling. I mean, back then, you know, it's you got to think about when it came out too. Back 10, yeah. 15 years ago, if a game was like a solid seven, seven and a half, unless there was something crazy with it, it didn't really push copies the way it needed to. Right, like that was enough to have it give middling types of things now right if that game came out now um it would be an absolute like massive hit and um, maybe a remaster might save it they've done remasters all they have yeah well yep. then i have and to it, eat my own it, words on that one it, but it, it just doesn't work i'm trying to think of a game something middling. i don't know like i feel like like for instance like i feel like if valheim came out 15 years ago they'd say yeah it's all right it's cool but because it came out in this climate where everyone can ha- it was way more accessible, everyone can see it, they can watch people playing it and kind of get exposed to it, then it right. blows up and it sells 13 million copies, right? Like, yeah. If it had something like that now, I feel like it may do better, but um, it did not have that, did not have the luxury of that. And you have Square, which is already, they make dumb decisions, they have weird high expectations. Hey, why did Final Fantasy 16 undersell? Well, because you put it on one console that no one owns. That's why I didn't sell. That's, <laughs> you know, um, like no yeah. one can get a PlayStation Five, and you made it a PlayStation Five exclusive. That's why it undersold. Um, I'm not gonna buy a game if I don't have the system. Yeah. So you know, it's just a subject to the company and quote unquote under delivering. Who knows what underselling is? Because Final Fantasy 16 moved like something like four or five million copies. That's underselling to them. So who knows? Absolutely insane. I feel like I Sleeping wish I Dogs could sell 500. Or- Five million or something. Yeah, I feel like Sleeping Dogs probably pushed a million copies easy, but I don't know if that's enough for a sequel. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have one more. Okay. And it's also again, it's another different twisted metal. This one was uh gonna come out in two thousand eight. Well, that's when it was developing when it was strapped, and they strapped it. Because MotorStorm Apocalypse was coming out. Because it was going to be in a post-apocalyptic world. And that game was a racing game, which was already in a post-apocalyptic world. So they didn't want two post-apocalyptic worlds that have cars in them to come out at the same time. But was that... That was being... That other Motors whatever thing. That's being developed by a different... Apocalypse? Yeah, that was being developed by a different company. Yeah, but it was also... It was for the PlayStation. But I mean... They're twisted metal. I know, I know. That just because they both have cars and they're both post-apocalyptic, yeah, it's good. Two completely different games. Yeah. Also, like that's a, here's the thing, man. You're twisted metal. You gotta say it with your chest. You gotta go out there with your balls held high and say we're twisted metal. We're gonna put our game out here anyway. That's up what until they, that point, everything was selling. Yeah, because that was before the 2012 version, obviously, since it was in 2008. Yeah. I don't get some of these decisions. It's like, it's like, it's come, kind of going back to that conversation we had with like Titanfall with like, you know, like Activision Blizzard said, hey, we're releasing, um, I don't know, uh, Call of Duty on October 11th. Ha. Ah. And then EA says, oh yeah, well, we're releasing Battlefield 1 on October 17th. Ha. Ah. I like those apples. You believe in the IP, 
You believe in the legacy of it. You put it out there. You duke it out. The fact that right. they're like, we've got Twisted Metal. Oh, but Motor Geostorm Apocalypse 5 might be coming out at the same time. We can't release it then. We have to do something else. I'm sorry. Are you not Twisted Metal? Do you not have <laughs> a pedigree? <laughs> are you? Uh, you shouldn't be afraid. Motor Storm or Motorcade or whatever the heck else. Their name. They should be scared. Right. They should be scared of Twisted Metal. You know what? That right, but that right there, that's insight into how that franchise went wham. That's that's insight into it. Not enough confidence, not enough belief and confidence in the IP. Yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. It is. Yeah. I think I think that's all I got. Yeah. Um I'll go ahead and get my fourth. Yeah, let's see. Fourth, fourth one is Scalebound. Uh it was going to be an Xbox exclusive being developed by Platinum Games, who made Vanquish and Bayonetta. Cool okay. action game developed by a Japanese studio. Um, and then Xbox botched it. And then they botched the relationship with Platinum Games. Well, they familiar. had to, yeah, they had to, they canceled it. And that's why Xbox's infrastructure with Japanese developers is so poor. And they don't really have a lot in the docket. And that's a segment of the market that they're missing out on. It's because they don't know how to cultivate those, those relationships. So... That's um, crazy. Yeah, but that one got that was a big, big game to get canceled by all sides. Like that really impacted Xbox. It also really impacted Platinum Games. Right. So um, yeah, that's it. That's the other one. But Dang. I love Vanquish. Vanquish is one of my favorite games, and mm-hmm. Platinum Games developed it. So I'm like, oh, that would have been awesome to have a Platinum Games. And Scalebound was like dragon. It had dragons and stuff, and it. it was going to be cool. So uh, yeah, but it got of, course, it, of course it'd be cool. It has dragons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that brings us near the end of the podcast episode, which means it's time for final thoughts. Where we can offer offer a final thought about anything that's related or unrelated to the podcast episode. So, who would like to give a final thought first? I'll go first. Okay. Okay, so I saw an article and I read part of it. I didn't look into it myself to see if it was fact checked or not mm-hmm. but apparently pokemon arceus had voice acting in it and they just took it out hmm what just took it out in the capital f mm-hmm. were they thinking um they probably didn't have it all synced or locked in or whatever maybe and like, like, if it was there, maybe we just yeah. had to work on it a little bit more, and it would have been fine. Too much work for Game Freak. Uh, we don't do all I, that. Yeah, that was my ma- the biggest gripe I had with that game. Yeah, we I only do so at this much. Point. Only so much are we going to do. We at Game Freak do only so much. That's their motto. That's their mission <laughs> statement. <laughs> if you walk in a Game Freak and you if you walk and you see the sign of their mission statement, it says we do only so much. And that's how we make more money. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my final thought. Like, come on. Yeah, I feel you. Um, you could have just put it in there. Uh, let's see. My final thoughts is that um, you know, I'll I'll go back and and revisit the thing of uh Dragon Age: The Veil Guard. Okay. I have not heard a lot about it, and that worries me. Right. <laughs> for a game for a game that big and an IP that well known, the fact that we have not heard a lot about it kind of worries me. Now, is has there been talk about it? Do enough people know about it to talk about it? I feel like I don't mean I feel like it should be, right? But like I'm just comparing it to like other games, so I'm thinking about something like Starfield. Mm-hmm. You couldn't avoid hearing about Starfield, even if you had no interest yeah. in that game. Yeah, you're right. This is Bioware's biggest game. It's their most important game, I would argue, for that studio. Bioware could be going the way of, we had an, um level 118, we talked about developers we would want to bring back from the dead. Bioware might end up being one of those developers in a few That's- years now if this doesn't work. <laughs> and the idea that we have not heard anything about it, really, right, is a little like, hmm, there's something going on here that may not be good. So we'll see. Hopefully yeah, it's hopefully scary. it it comes out and it's great and if that's the case, I'll be looking into grabbing a copy 
and and playing that. Um, I'll probably end up playing through some more of the other Dragon Ages before I do do that. But um, but yeah, that's my concern, and that's my final thought on that. There it is. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of level 121 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to like and follow the podcast on and listen on your preferred podcast services. It's very important you listen. Um, Also, we are on the socials. If you want to like or follow, share there. We are on Facebook, Twitter. They call X. We are on Instagram. We are on TikTok. And of course, we are on YouTube, where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. If you want to support us with the monies, there's a couple of ways you can do that. One, buy the merch. We got merch, phone cases, shirts, hats, cups, mugs, all those different types of things. Stickers. Stickers. Tons of stickers, right? By tons, I mean maybe three. Uh, but yeah, we got a bunch of stuff there you can check out. Also, we have a Patreon. If you want to support us there, subscription kind of thing. We have three tiers, a two, five, and seven dollar tier, each offering bits of, of goodies and unique content. There will be, it's in the docket, just needs to keep uploaded. There will be more of the game dev tycoon. Let's play going up there. Um, so make sure you look out for that when it drops. Uh, but that is it for me. David, was there anything else you wanted to add? Please. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level. <laughs>